Hi guys, welcome back. I wanted to talk to you just a few minutes about the next project for Critic. It's going to be to calculate the field of a dipole. So let's take a look at it. Um, <clears throat> it's different from the last project in the sense that in, in this case we're, we're calculating the field not just to a single point charge, which we did in positronium, <clears throat> but we're actually calculating a field due to two charges. So you're going to have to calculate the electric field from the first charge, calculate the electric field from the second charge, add those two fields together to get the net field. That uh, combination of two point charges separated by some distance is called a dipole. So we'll be calculating the field of a dipole. What we won't be doing is calculating the motion of any objects experiencing the force produced by this field of a dipole. So this is only going to involve com computational learning outcome one, the ability to calculate fields, electric fields due to charge distributions, and theoretical learning outcome two, which <coughs> is to be able to theoretically compute fields from charges, so electric fields from charges. So it's a computational and theoretical learning outcome. Um, <coughs> the rubric is simpler. It's got computational correctness still. It's got evaluation of results, but it's only got TLO2 and CLO3. So there's no TLO1 and there's no uh, CLO2, so, or no CLO3, the calculating motion. So anyway, I hope that's clear. Um, th let's take a look at the code. You can see what we got here. Sorry about that. I had to clear my cache. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is a very, very slightly modified version of the uh, code that goes with figure 13.5.1 in the textbook. If you run this program as it is, you're going to see exactly that figure. That's it. This, uh, that's the field due to a point charge, but it's evaluated on a circle that's not consistent. The center of the screen is here. This charge is um, 10 nanometers, or, or I'm sorry, 5 nanometers to the left of the origin. <clears throat> and we're calculating the field in a circle that's concentric with the origin. So these field uh, vectors, these electric field vectors, are being calculated on a circle that's not concentric with the charge. Okay. If I put another charge here, I'm going to get a set of field vectors that's similar to this but point in the opposite direction. And then the net field from both those charges is going to be the superposition of those two fields. So uh, what I've done that's different from the code in the textbook is instead of making Q a separate variable, I've added Q as an attribute of the source. So what I propose we do is we change this guy to source 1, and then we make an exactly similar source, call it source 2, but rather than being minus 5 nanometers, it'll be plus 5 nanometers from the origin. And instead of being red, it'll be blue. <coughs> and instead of having a positive charge, it's going to have a negative charge. So that's going to be my negative source. Does that make sense? Um, the other thing I would recommend doing is bumping up this radius a little bit, get a little farther out from the charges, because the dipole formula is only good if you're a distance away from the charges that's much greater than their separation. The other thing you're probably going to want to do is to make the radius of the charges um, a little bit bigger so they're more visible when you have a larger, when you're looking at the field at a larger distance. And you're going to have to monkey with the scale factor. The scale factor here is there to make the electric fields look nice. The electric fields, these arrows are drawn in space, but the electric field has units of newtons per coulomb, it's not meters. So you've got to convert between the newtons per coulomb of the electric field to the meters of the display, because we're drawing arrows that are uh, have actual length units. So that's what this scale factor does. Is you multiply the scale factor by the electric field and that tells you how big the axis of the arrow needs to be. The axis of the arrow is the distance from its tip, tip to its tail. Um, it's a vector that points in the direction of the arrow that whose length is equal to the length of the arrow. You might also want to bump up the shaft width a little bit. I mean, if you increase the radius of the spheres, you'll probably be okay with using the radius as a scale, <clears throat> but you can play with it. Anyway, um, really the program's not that complicated. Half of it's done for you. This calculates the field due to source one. Oh, we've got to change this to source one, and I've got to change this to source one, and I've got to change, where else is there a source? Uh, source one, like that. 
yeah, I gotta make all those changes, otherwise the program won't even run. Let's try it, make sure it still works. Yep, okay. Oh, and there's my other charge. So there's the positive charge, there's the negative charge. Of course, I haven't calculated the field from the negative charge, and I haven't added the two fields together, and I haven't used the sum of the two fields to draw the arrow. So that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to add more code like this to calculate the field from the negative charge. You're going to make an, and make the arrow <coughs> not have its axis not equal to the field from one charge or the other, but to the field that you get when you add those two fields together. Okay. Hopefully that's not too bad. You don't have, there's not a whole lot you have to change. You've got to, basically, our observation is going to be the same because you're observing the field at a single point. You're just going to have to reproduce those same three lines except for source two, and then you're going to have to draw an arrow that's proportional to the sum of the two fields, and that should do it. Okay, well, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Oh, I should show you. This is what the program looks like when you get it running. I went ahead and cooked it up on GlowScript, but it'll look the same on uh, on Trinket. Um, you can see that uh, when you're on the left side of the positive charge, you have a electric field pointing away from that positive charge. When you go over to the right side of the negative charge, you get a field pointing toward the negative charge. And then up here, you get a field that's half as big pointing in the opposite direction. And we don't ever calculate these ones around the uh, circle in on paper because these are complicated, but uh, the computer doesn't care. It can calculate them anywhere. So um, anyway, I hope that helps. Please don't hesitate to ask if you guys have questions.